Captain and Pangella too. And our host, Vincent Van Dahl. And he brings it to ya! Creature features and all creatures. Ghosts, spectres, phantoms, apparitions, spirits, wraiths, spooks, and poltergeists. They are the key ingredients that put the haunt into a haunted house. Rumor has it that our lovely polter mansion might be infested with polterghosts, but that is merely hearsay, gossip, and foolish speculation. Your hearsay heard you say that. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. With me is the lovely little miss, Tangella, whose bite is far worse than her bark. And to this side, hailing from the land of currywurst, sauerkraut, and the Mercedes-Benz model SL550, is my dedicated butler, henchman, and reluctant crony, the dashing Mr. Livingston. And do we have a spooky and scary program in store just for you tonight? First up, our film. We screened this particular movie some three years ago, but we know a good number of you splendid people likely missed it. And that gem of the screen would be The Ghost of Sierra de Cobre from 1964. Starring Martin Landau and Diane Baker, this is a lovely film about an heiress who thinks she is free of her manipulative and recently deceased mother-in-law, only to discover that the old nag is now intent upon haunting her from beyond the grave. You actually wish for me to tell them that? It would appear that my spoiled housemate knows nothing about the loathing most viewers have for those who dispense in spoilers. No. And who might we have seated tonight in the guest chair, Livingston? The Napa Ghost Hunters. Ah, how lovely and appropriate given tonight's subject matter. Appropriate. Indeed. Last time they were here, they consumed an entire bottle of your 40-year-old scotch. No worries, Livingston. That scotch was obviously well past its stale date and should have been cast to the rubbish over 35 years ago. In any case, I'm sure they'll tell us about their recent ghost hunting escapades in the UK and perhaps maybe even show us a clip or two from their upcoming television extravaganza. So don't go away, for it shall be another night of ghost people watching a ghost movie fright right here on Creature Features. <laughs> I still don't know how she does that. Stay tuned. So, uh, Ghost Hunters, Devin and Ellen, did you know that tonight at 10 p.m. on the Love Boat, Las Vegas showgirl turned nurse turns Love Boat on? Well. <laughs> wow. That's, that's tonight. Not cool. No, that's at 9 p.m. That's, that's on right now. Wow. Somebody. And Fantasy Island's on you, after it. And Fantasy Island's on <laughs> afterwards. And that's, uh, can a lady of the night find real love on Fantasy Island? Oh. Pretty Ooh. woman. Yes, definitely. Wow. Wow. See, you could be watching something racy, but instead, you're here with us. Welcome to Creature Features. So uh, we've got these two back. You might remember their faces, these two lovely faces. They are the Napa Ghost Hunters, Ellen and Devin. And uh, it's it's been some time. How long has it been? About a year, I think. A year, that's now. all? Yeah, it's. It, I think it's been a little over a year. Yeah. A little over a year. We've had a lot of things happen, though. Yeah. Oh, yeah? No, you guys have been busy. We... 
strive to be busy. Very We've got busy. a lot to cover. You went to Ireland. Yes. Went to Ireland. For a month. Yep. You shot a pilot. We shot a pilot. Shot Not a pilot. on the plane to Ireland. No. <laughs> no. No, yeah. you don't want to do that no, because hijacking is bad. Right? No. Okay. <laughs> well, especially if you don't know how to fly the plane yourself, what are you going to do? Well, I, I do flight simulators, so I think I got it. Oh, you think okay. you can fly? Yeah, I, I got it. A, I got a it. jumbo jet. Yeah. Like, oh wow. Yeah, I think now, I got it. He's a ghost hunter. He's an international man of mystery now, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> is this your first time going uh, off the off across the pond? Uh, no, I've I've been to England. All right. Uh, a few times, and then I've been to I've Ireland been a few twice. times as well. Yeah, well, right. that's where you were. Right, right. Yeah. That's where you were. But, uh, you know, I've been to Ireland only once my entire life. Really? Yeah, yeah. Oh, you need to go back. Yeah, I know. You need to go back yeah. home. Oh, it's yeah. wonderful there. And the one yeah. time I went, there was a, there's a bit of a skirmish going on, so... No, I should go back now that there's peace of... Yes, they just celebrated type. 25 years of peace. Nice. The skirmish, was it mm -hmm. rugby? No. That was a scrum. Uh, oh. Right. That would be a scrum. She's right. All these terms. I don't know. Sierra de Cobre, the ghost of Sierra de Cobre. Have you not seen this film? I have not. Another view. I have not. Well, I'm very excited for it. Though. So, Martin Landau, does that name ring a bell? Yes, it oh, does. Yes. Right? No, Absolutely. he's in it. And Am then um, Kim something. Passenger. No. <laughs> some, some woman is Carol in it. Baker. And she's, what's her name? Carol Baker. Carol Baker, I was close, <laughs> right? She's in it. No, she's lovely. She's got these chiseled cheeks that are just, I, I'm enamored watching just her cheeks because they're so perfect. You know, she could be a supermodel if she was around today. Maybe she is around today and she is, I don't know. Anyways, uh, we're going to watch this movie and then we're going to come back and uh, talk with you guys, right? Terrific. Excellent. All right, let's here. start the film. Ghost of Sierra de Cobre. Don't go away. We're going to have fun tonight, promise. Henry? Henry? It's been 
so long. So horrible. Horrible? Started three days after you left. How long ago was that? How many years? Three small weeks. It was the fastest, most successful business trip that I or anyone else ever accomplished for you. What started? I woke up in the middle of the night, and I knew something was wrong. And for the first time in my life, Vivian, being blind terrified me. Didn't you ring for the servants? They were gone. When did they return? They didn't. Well, I heard a door slam at the back of the house as I came up the stairs. The new housekeeper. She came the day after they left. She said they told her that I'd be needing someone. How do you do, Mrs. Mandor? I've been looking forward to your return. Why do you do this?
Mr. Orion. Thank you for not dismissing my call as a prank. You'd be amazed how few pranksters asked me to meet them in a cemetery at midnight. I hope I didn't tear you away from anything really important. If you're being haunted, Mrs. Mandor. Vivia, please. My husband's name still slightly overwhelms me. It's an impressive name. Impressive and tragic. Mostly to the Mandors themselves. I've seen villages in Mexico. Living people living in tin and mud. And here, dignity, protection from the rain, and even art. And all wasted on the dead. Yes, I suppose I am haunted, Mr. Orion, by my memories of other people's anguish. But not by a ghost. How could I be? I don't believe in ghosts. Someone must. Unbelievers rarely are willing to pay my fee. My husband asked me to write you a check. In any amount. Is your name spelled O apostrophe, Mr. Orion? O R I O N, as in the constellation. Orion, the blind hunter. My husband wants you to investigate a ghost that's haunting him by telephone. He says it's a woman's voice, but it says nothing. It merely sobs and sobs. His mother died almost a year ago. He's convinced that it's her voice calling from in there. The telephone is within arm's reach of her coffin. You fill in the amount, Mr. Orion. You look like a man who knows his own price. If your husband isn't being genuinely haunted, I won't charge a penny. Whenever I do uncover a prank or any other crime, I turn it over to the police department. The medium who charges only for the genuine thing must be a very poor medium. Officially, I'm an architect, and I make a sizable living at it. And I am not a medium. Forgive me. My husband did insist I refer to you as a psychical consultant. Which is a different breed of cat altogether. Would you rather not come with me, Mrs. Mandor? It's natural to be disquieted. Even for an unbeliever? People who call themselves unbelievers always, always remind me of Madame Pompadour's famous remark. I don't believe in ghosts, but I'm afraid of them.
So, Ellen and Devin, ghost hunters, have you ever been hired by a blind man who thinks his next wife, dead wife, is call, ringing him on the phone? Never a blind man. Never a blind man, no. Did get the phone call call one time for the... You, know, you I know, have had unnatural ringing phones. I know her. a great joke about the blind man. Okay. No, it's, it's, no, it's not about a blind man. It's about a man who hangs blind. <laughs> no, 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 it's a good joke. I, I, I shall relay it later. In any case, um, so, but do you like do for higher work? Like, do, can people Absolutely. call you up and say, I think I have a ghost and I would like you to eliminate it? Yes. Yes. Do you do this? Yes, yes. we do. Wow. Well, all right. How many times have you done something Hundreds. Like Hundreds. Hundreds of times. Hundreds of times. So you're, you're like an exterminator in a sense, right? I guess you could say that. Yeah, kind of. Our work's a little bit different, though. We try to... Try to make them cross over. Yeah, we try to make them go towards the so light. So you don't carry a little box that you force them into. No, I that's wish only on, that's, we had that. Right. That's only on the Ghostbusters. Right. The trap. No, so... Did, did have a funny experience with the phone, though. One time. I have too. I was right. I was doing an investigation at a place called Wolf Manor down in Clovis. Right. And it used to be a sanitarium. Okay. People basically were warehoused there to die. Right. All right. And, you know, we got permission to go in because we don't do things illegally. We got permission to go in there and check this place out and do some hunting there. In the middle of the hunt, all of a sudden all these cops come showing up at the, at the old hospital, okay? They're, they're here, and they're like, what are you guys doing here? And, you know, obviously somebody called it in. They saw somebody running around with a bunch of flashlights and everything. So I showed them all the paperwork we had and the owner's consent, told them to call the owner, and, you know, he calls and we get permission. He's like, well, we keep getting 911 calls from this location. And hmm. I was like, well, it's none of us. All our phones are off. And he goes, no, it's actually from the building itself. The landline. The landline. So I'm like, okay, well, let me take you downstairs in the basement and show you what the landline looks like. Because it had been disconnected and there was a space about this much that it couldn't make a connection. So we believe that it was actually Ghostly ghost. phantom phone call. So it is a possibility. <laughs> phantom phone call. Yeah. Phantom phone call, exactly. Right. Yeah. I, yeah. It, it, so it does happen. And what yes, happened with you? What a it great was, name for a mobile company. <laughs> phantom phone phantom <laughs> phone call company yes phantom phantom telephone incorporated yes like so this happened to you as well yes it happened at the coq in benicia what's a coq it's the commanding officer's quarters oh uh we were in there and we, i did not know you were served in a military unit i did not <laughs> I just got permission to be there. Oh, nice. All right. <laughs> so the military does not have, like, staff ghost hunters of their own. They do, actually. We found out about a, uh, an entire we're, we're kind not, of... We're not supposed to talk Oh, yeah, that's right. We're not uh, supposed to talk about uh, that. Just top secret material. <laughs> All right, so this telephone story. Tell me yours. So we were working in there, and um, the phone apparently kept ringing to the cops on the other side, and they came to the COQ, and there is no phone, period in that building my goodness so same same scenario wow so this movie really touches on that premise right and paranormal investigation and the phone call and the phone now, call you guys should start a new paranormal phone company all right do it, do it. <laughs> anyways let's get back to this film and when we come back i want to hear about this trip you took to ireland all, all right all right all right, off we go back to Ghost of Sierra de Cobre. Don't you dare go away because uh, I think we can do mail first. Anyways, see you soon. Why the telephone with an arm's reach of her coffin? Louise Mandor had a lifelong fear of being mistaken for dead and buried alive. When she was a very little girl, they brought her here to attend a relative's funeral. During the services, she wandered off alone. Somehow, accidentally, she locked herself in one of the burial chambers. Poor Louise. I don't believe she really thought anyone would bury her alive. 
but her will made every possible provision for it. Five doctors were to sign her death certificate. Her body was not to be embalmed, her coffin was to be left open, and there was to be a direct telephone line from her burial chamber to Henry's room at the house. How long did she expect a grown married man to stay within reach of that phone? For the rest of his life. She had that kind of hold on him? Oh, she simply knew Henry had no reason whatever to leave the house. Why should he? He's already traveled the whole world. Several times. I suppose he wanted the world to look at him. Since he could never look at the world. Henry's been blind since birth. months ago, I went to New York on business. His mother had bequeathed large sums of money to certain charities and appointed me administrator. While I was gone, these calls couldn't be made from any place other than the police man was very in chamber. No, it's a direct line. Couldn't someone else have a key to this place? It doesn't work like an ordinary intercom. It has to be dialed. And only Louise Mandor knew that code number. Well, I believe you're as certain as I am, Mr. Ryan. That this is not a genuine haunting? That it is a prank. Do you think it's a prank, Mrs. Mandor? I don't know. Whatever it is, it's driving Henry to the edge of madness. of its former existence in order to create tangible evidence of its presence. According to pre-scientific theory, a ghost is of itself a physical entity. It's on this wind.
Dial H E L P. The code number? Mrs. Landlord? I want to talk to your husband tonight. Will you give me your address or shall I follow your car? I came by taxi. Then we'll go together in my car. I left my purse. Let me go. No. I want to prove I'm not afraid. To myself, that is. Johann, Johann Sebastian Bach. You act like you don't like Bach or something like that. I prefer Beethoven. Well, I like Beethoven too, but not as much of a, as his shoes. Show us your shoes. Look at those fantastic boots. It's Aren't those interesting the Interesting color green. No, typically she wears those Victorian angry woman shoes. Right. But these, these are fun and festive, are they not? No. No, no. Anyways, uh, welcome back to the show. Uh, the Ghost Hunters will rejoin us shortly, but we're going to do some mail because we're sent mail, and if we don't read it, then it's, it's it not apropos, right? It's not apropos. Right. What do you got? Canada. Canada. Oh, Canada. You know, we have a lot of viewers in Canada. We do. Yeah, I don't know why. Hey, why would they want to watch a bunch of silly people in America doing this type of thing? Who so knows? So they could laugh at you. Oh, that's a good... That's a good reason. Rod and Rhonda Gale. That's great. Rod and Rhonda. You know, they could have the monograms on their bathrobes look similar. Mm. Right? Oh, my goodness. All right. So we've got... I'm supposed to read this. Oh, so you were kind enough to type it out for me. He knows that sometimes I have trouble reading people's... What do they call it? Cursive? 
Chicken scratch. Chicken scratch, right. All right, so we've got uh, Dear Vincent Tangilla and Mr. Livingston. My name is Rod Gale, and I'm writing to you from Cape Breton, Breton, Cape Breton Island, Canada. Cape Breton is a small island off the coast of Nova Scotia, a province of Canada. I imagine I might be the first person writing to you from Cape Breton. It's quite likely, is it not? More than likely. Probably. I have become a great fan of your program. It has become one of my go-to shows for weekend viewing. My wife, who is far more mature than I am, enjoys the conversations between Mr. Livingston and Vincent as much as the movies that are shown. Yeah, you know, I hear that all the time, and I don't know why. There's nothing very, very intellectual about our conversation. Not very deep, no. No, no, I'll say something, and then you'll grunt something back, and then I'll grunt something back to you, and it's... I don't think, grunting. I don't think we accomplish much. Uh, and Tangela's pantomime, which reminds me of some silent film star's portrayal of evil. Perhaps Mary Pickford possessed. Yeah, you know, she kind of looks like Mary Pickford. She has a touch of that. Right. No, she's got the, the dark eyes makeup. I don't know. I want to write you to tell you, your cast and crew, that you're all doing a great job and your program is great fun. I do have a request, though. I thought it might be nice for you to play some Canadian horror films. My Bloody Valentine, that was filmed right here in Cape Britain, Shivers, and an early David Cronenberg film, The Brood, The Changeling, starring George C. Scott and The Gate. A great, fun 80s movie. Anyway, I hope this letter finds you all well. Keep up the great work. Yours, Rod Gale. P.S. Love Canada, eh? Yes. All right, so back to your films here. Um, first, Canadian films. We do show those quite often, do we not? And some We've odd had ones. a few. No, we did Insect, which was actually called Blue Monkey, mm. right? And there was this other one with a creepy girl. And we've got one with a creepy boy now that we have not shown yet. It was done in Canada. So hmm. we've got lots of Canadian films coming. As far as these films go, these are good ones. And I don't think we could afford it yet, could we? We'll have a look. All right, we'll try. Anyways, uh, thanks for writing, Rod, and give all regards to Rhonda. Next up, Mr. Livingston. Have an email. That would be an email from... There's no name. All right. Anyways, hi guys. I watch you on YouTube marathon style. Is that when they wear the, like the the trainer shoes and the short no, pants? No, that's not what he. That's meant. not marathon style, all right? No. Uh, I love most of your movies, but mostly I love you guys. Vincent is handsome, and Livingston has the most sexiest eyes, and is a refined gentleman. He's got watery eyes right now because of all the the dry grass. Hay fever. Is that what you called it? Hay fever? Hay fever. Hay fever, right. Tanchilla appears to be an awesome lady to hang with. If, if, if you're talking about being hanged by the neck, yes, she is an awesome woman to do that with. She's a pretty little lady, and you guys should be nice to her. Now, everybody's nice to her except for uh, Andrew, right? Andrew is still mm. not learning. We, we've got a chicken and egg situation there where we don't know whether he's mean to her because she was mean to him first or... She's mean, I, I don't know. She started it. Well, he always says this, but we don't know it's true. She denies it, so. We need scientific proof. We need somebody to do like a scientific thing. Well, I keep okay. recommending that we install cameras, but. Uh, no, that would be odd. The next thing you know, we're on like ghostly shows and being interviewed by the likes of these two, right? Because we would have evidence of this one. All right, uh, let's see. Well, my name is Morticia, and yes, it's really my name, and I live in North Carolina. Love you guys, and I'm glad I found you here on YouTube. Morticia is an actual Morticia that watches our show. That's interesting. No, it's more than interesting. Now, yeah, send, us, send us a photo, Morticia, and we'll put it up next time so we can say, Morticia watches our show. I, I actually want to see if she looks like the real Morticia, or the mm. other Morticia, I should the say, other right? Morticia. All right, thanks for writing, Morticia. Up next, Mr. Livingston is... Oklahoma City, Oklahoma. I love this place, Oklahoma City. You know why? Because you always know where you are. This right? is true. Yeah. It's so, like, what state am I in? Oh, I'm in Oklahoma State because I'm in Oklahoma City. Or, which city I, am I in? Oh, Oklahoma. That's right. You astound me. Scott Buzzard. No, that astounds me. Scott Buzzard? The man's name is Scott Buzzard. You know what a buzzard is, right? It's a bird. 
No, it's more than a bird. You didn't even open this one. Oh, yes, you did. Uh, no, the buzzard is a vulture. A vulture? A vulture. Which is a bird? This man sees no significance in your name, Scott. But that's all right. I do. All right, dear Vincent, I'm writing to let you know that your movie selections are getting better by the week. The reincarnation of Peter Proud is one of my favorites. Mine as well, and nobody gives us any love about that film. No. That's a wonderful film, and it was, it was uh, you know, it, it scared the pants off me in, in the 70s. I was young when I saw it, but it still scares me a bit. He's got nothing to say about it. He didn't even watch the movie. Your selection of guests to interview have been excellent too. It takes all three of you to make the show work. You seem to be the mastermind. Congratulations for all the hard work. So mastermind, no, I would say I'm the ringmaster, not the mastermind. Ring leader. Ring leader. No, there's smarter people than me putting this show together. I just make faces in the camera, right? Yeah. That's all I do. Uh, the Friday show is good. The movie selection is excellent. I do wonder how one talking host and one silent partner is going to work. Well, she's not that silent. You, she, oh, you, she talks to me. You just cannot hear her. But uh, no, she speaks to me on the Friday show. You've seen the Friday shows, right? Yes, I... No, she's, she's chattering in my ear the entire time. Uh, Tangela, can you send me an autographed picture of yourself? Yes, she will. I really enjoy your antics on the show. Your not talking drives me crazy, Scott Buzzard. Well, you know, if you heard her speak and the things that comes out of that pretty little mouth of hers, you would probably regret that request, Scott, but we will send you that photo, even if we have to get Andrew to force her to sign it. Right? Right. Anyways, that is it for mail. If you'd like to send us mail of your own, uh, go to hellocreaturefeatures.com and all the information you need for sending us email or sending us an actual package can be found at that web address. And uh, we're going to get right back to the film, but when we come back after the break, we will be rejoined by our friends from the Napa Ghost Hunting Conglomerate. See you soon. Mr. Orion, would you please come in? I'm Mr. Orion's housekeeper, Mary Finch. Would you care for this? We met last night, Mrs. Mandor, but being in shock, you may not have noticed. I helped Mr. Orion put you to bed. Did he explain my shock? He said something about you having seen a blood-splashed apparition in a mausoleum. No, what was a nice girl like you doing in a place like that? Mrs. Finch, could that be our doorbell? The young and wealthy make remarkable recoveries. You'd better leave that tray in the kitchen, Mrs. Finch, and get down to that door before Mr. Sloan breaks it in.
Barry Finch, do you know why I didn't keep his 8.30 appointment with the Los Angeles City Council? I'm afraid the world of art and architecture will have to be a bit patient, Mr. Sloan. Your favorite employee is often another of his morbid adventures. Two coffees, Mrs. Finch, please. Nelson, you don't seem to appreciate the fact that you live in the age of the bulldozers. Now, the city council is perfectly willing to consider saving one of our few historical buildings. But unless you meet with them across a friendly breakfast table and show them how it can be saved without excessive expense, Nelson... The mortar used in brick buildings 90 years ago was different from that used today. Now, moving that building to a city park would be a difficult and costly operation. I assured the entire council. I'll see the council tomorrow morning. Unless there's more to this than prank phone calls. You are uh, almost a great architect, Nelson. And you're unquestionably this country's foremost restoration specialist. Why do you squander your genius on... The haunted. Would you call a taxi for me, Mr. Orion? He doesn't have a telephone. Mr. Sloan, Mrs. Mandor. I'll pick you up myself. Right here. At the dot of dawn. Bye, Mrs. Mandor. Au revoir, Nelson. Bye, Mary Finch. Where did you get it? It's the mission of Sierra de Cobre. According to legend, the mission was haunted by a bleeding ghost. The Sierra de Cobre authorities allowed the legend to flourish until the bleeding ghost murdered an American woman, a school teacher. Then they called me in. I'll just be a minute, Mrs. Mandor. Have you ever seen a genuine apparition? I'm a realist, Mrs. Mandor. That's the prime reason Mr. Orion employs me. Like all promoters of the state, he needs his devil's advocate. If you saw one, and the terror you felt left no room for doubt... I'd make room. Someone's got to not believe in ghosts. I left it there last night. I had a faint dizziness and lost control, so I called a taxi. If you'll give me the key, I'll move it out of our way. Oh. I must have lost them. It's a long way off, but would you like to walk to the house?
over 100 acres, one of the very few estates in this country that hasn't been sold off and subdivided. Seems sort of old world, doesn't it? Having an entire family fortune tied up in real estate. The Mandors aren't interested in selling any part of this. My husband is the only Mandor left, and he wouldn't sell it if his life depended on it. He's very loyal to the wishes of his ancestors. Why, are you interested in buying? Is there a reason why your husband uses his mother's maiden name? Yes. The most recent offer was seven and a quarter million dollars. Could Benedict's loan associate better that? It'll be almost immoral to let the bulldozers get at all this perfect nature. Can you picture it, Mrs. Mandor? Every hundred feet of motor-driven barbecue with a high middle-income house attached. <laughs> Why do you traffic in the supernatural? It's one thing to rebel against urban development, but to believe in things that science has disproven. Disproven? No, no, merely not been able to prove. Distinction is slight. Nevertheless, it's there. And I've always been against any dogma or philosophy that says we must discard and disbelieve in that which science cannot prove, computerize, or tame. Mrs. Mandor, supernaturally or otherwise, we are all haunted. Anyone who's lived in this past century, this last week, cannot escape being haunted. For some of us, it's a mass haunting, an all-pervading specter of guilt, or futility, or alienation that we suffer collectively. For others, the haunting is more private and more terrible because the ghosts are ours alone and we recognize them. Sometimes it takes so little to free ourselves of our ghosts. And if my believing in another man's haunting helps to free him, does it matter whether science calls his agony hallucinatory or real? Features is brought to you by CreatureFeatureStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to Creature Features. Welcome back to Creature. <laughs> you know, I should do some kind of song that, you know, we could all sing when we come back from the next break. Or you could do a dirty limerick. <laughs> I hadn't thought of that. Man, the no, whole Irish thing it. is just stuck right? on you. The Irish thing is stuck in not, my mind. She's not, she's not, uh, she's not wrong. Nope. We could do that. Yeah, we could. Nope. All right. Anyways, uh, welcome back to the show. A uh, quick fact about this film. So, um, Carol Baker, who is the woman with the nice cheeks, Cheeks on her face. Uh, she, from this role, uh, got a role in the William Castle's... Homicidal. Homicidal. Just from this film. Because she was so good. Terrific. Right? Yeah. Well, it all starts with one homicide. I, you know, I've never seen this film. Have you? Homicidal? No. No. No, no it's, it's another one. 
I have to look into. Next week, can you come back? Of course. We're here. Right. Yeah, we'll watch it. Why not? Let's do it. Anyways, uh, to you guys, you just got back from Ireland. Yes, we sure did. I bet there's all kinds of ghosts in Ireland. There sure are. So how many total did you see on this trip? Uh, we didn't see them per se. We felt them. Oh, we actually like you touched, you reached out and touched and felt ghosts. Felt their presence. Oh, we the stayed presence. in a, an old, um, our flat that we stayed in used to be an old hotel. Right. So there were people coming and going constantly and shadow figures in the flat. Um, and these were not tourists from Belgium. Oh, no, no, it was it? No, the building was quiet. We had the entire upstairs to ourselves. And you saw these shadow things. Yes. Oh, what about the video? We, we could show some footage of this. Well, we've got some recordings we can play. Audio recording. Yes. Audio. Audio. And so what kind of things did you hear? Well, we, we use a couple different methods. Uh, we use uh, digital voice recorders and we get right. EVPs, electric voice phenomena. Right. We also use a spirit box. Spirit box takes radio frequency and uh, combines that with radio transmission. And the words, are, the ghost can use that frequency and transmission and create words and our sentences. So basically it's like you're having a ghost respond to you in real time. You know, one thing I've learned from these two is that ghosts are very technical people. <laughs> <laughs> no, they know how to use all this technology that you pull out of your bag. Right. And they're just like, they're sending you emails and text oh, messages. I wish they would send I us an email. I wish they would too. Morris a, code. Morris code. Maybe it's morbid code. There's a theory now about uh, about ghosts being able to travel through the internet as a as a. Oh God! A as way. if I don't have enough problems here. <laughs> now I have to worry about the wire coming into my home. <laughs> All right. So you're in Ireland. You saw ghosts in the flat that you you stayed in, but uh, you, you you had to do some castles, right? Well, we did, we did a couple castles, right. and it was fantastic. But one of my like ultimate favorite things, because I use dowsing rods, which is very old right. school technology. Right. People can sit, you know, uh, water dowsing or water witching. It's the same right. thing. Right. And I was using copper rods, and we went out to a site. I forgot the name. It was in Millinmore. Yeah, Millinmore, and it was a tomb from 3000 BC. My goodness. And. The way the energy felt inside that tomb. Was it like a ring fort? Yeah, it was like a ring fort, and but you could see where they had the bodies the laid out. Bodies? Yeah. yeah, but not anymore, obviously. Right. But you could see where they had the bodies laid out at one point, and you could see the, the entrance of this tomb. The interesting thing was, is when I was working with the dowsing rods, I could track that energy line straight through the entrance all the way to where the bodies were, and then straight on out to the Atlantic. It was like a big surge of energy, almost like a ley line, or what people call dragon line. You said to the Atlantic. Mm -hmm. So you were water dousing. You just took a circuitous <laughs> route, right? Uh, about I, four miles yeah, away. Yeah, I said, yeah, show me the water. Right. And, and that's exactly like, what right, I'm saying. We're going to stop by these the spirits in the tomb on the way. <laughs> yeah. Well, on the way to the water that you're looking for, lad. That could be. No, all that right. No, no, I, I, I just, I, I yeah, know. I know. I've seen him you. work. It's pretty amazing. So we're not going to do a demo tonight, but next time you're on, we, we have to do this outside once. Yeah, excellent. So he could, he could show us where all the bodies are buried, the tangella planted out there, right? <laughs> he could probably use that to find them. Anyways, I'm in the signal. We got to get back to the film. Let's get back to the movie, and when we come back, I want to talk some more about Ireland, if we could. Terrific. Right. Excellent. All right, off we go. Back to Ghosts of Sierra de Cobre, 1964. Don't go away, please. This is Mandor. What did you see in that chamber last night? What did I imagine I saw? Blood splashed apparition. Did you see her, Mr. Orion? Her? No, but I saw the effect she had on you. She wants you to do. Lend her a quarter for the powder room. Mr. 
Mr. O'Ryan. Mr. Mandel. Our housekeeper, Paulina. Do you mind if she remains during our consultation? She's only been with us two months, but her concern for me is very real. And I'd like her to see for herself that you're not a charlatan. Is this the first time we've met? Perhaps I was among those who tried to touch your sleeve the day you rode into my village. Charlotte de Cobre? Charlatan? You could not exercise the bleeding ghost. There was no ghost of the mission of Sierra de Cobra. My own child once was splashed by the black blood of it. Water. Thickened with sugar, colored with soot, a sop for the tourists. The people of Sierra de Cobre had faith in you. We expected you to rid our mission of its horror. If you had merely failed in that, we would have forgiven you. But to cast suspicion on us, to say that one of us would murder an American. Some of us would rather believe in the supernatural, Mr. Orion. Ghosts can be less frightening than crime or madness. Mr. Mandor, do you want to believe that these calls come from the realm of the supernatural? Heavy is afraid they're the hallucinations of a blind madman. No. She hides her fear under that incredible tranquility of hers. But at odd times she weeps as only someone who loves someone can. I hear Paulina going to her and calming her somehow. Her fear is not entirely groundless, Mr. O'Ryan. My father went mad the night I was born. And some strains of madness are in her. Then, of course, she's never heard this phone ring. Nor has Paulina. Mr. Mandor, I don't feel there's anything supernatural about these calls. Again? He will try to persuade you that someone is trying to break your mind and your heart. To save his face and his lucrative reputation, he will cry trickery here as he cried murder in Sierra de Cobre. I could have saved you a great deal of expense and hope if I'd known that you were going to ask Mrs. Mandor to call on him for help. Your medium has no psychical powers. He cannot help you. No one can. The haunted must deal with their ghosts alone. Will your guest be staying for luncheon, Mr. Mandel? I do not claim psychical powers, Mr. Mandel. As an architect, I have always specialized in the restoration of old, forsaken houses. And in some of these houses, I've seen and heard things no one has ever proven or disproven. The mission at Sierra de Cobre might have been haunted, but I saw and felt nothing that could convince me of it. So I suggested that an autopsy be performed on the so-called victim, because she was an American and a, a schoolteacher at that, the authorities acted. She'd been poisoned. By sugared water colored with soot. By an overdose of an hallucinogenic drug called ayahuasca or yage. Did they find the murderer? No. Mr. Mandor, I've told you this because I need your trust and your rationality and your cooperation, not your... Not my blind faith. then I'm not being haunted. I am going mad.
Take her out of the house. Walk with her. She'll be all right now, Mr. Mandor. Sounded like someone locked inside a coffin. Someone not dead. Like the nightmares my mother used to have. Could this be a trick, too? Or is my mother trying to drive me mad? Drink this. It'll help. This lid hasn't been opened for years and years. The nails are buried in the paint. I can feel it. Could someone manufacture this, Mr. Orion? No. Or could someone enter my mother's burial chamber and dial the code number that only my mother knew? The code is recorded on the cross hanging in the chamber. Anyone looking for it could find it. And if not my mother, who? Who would want me mad? I understand the current market value of the Mandor estate is seven and a quarter million dollars. If you were declared insane... I have no heirs. Other than my wife, Mr. O'Ryan. You haven't answered my question. Was that pounding a trick, too? No. That pounding was a genuine psychical disturbance. Then my mother's trying to drive me mad. Mr. Mandor, would you tell my wife? I'd like to speak to her. Alone. You see why I grew so angry when I found that you'd called in Mr. Orion. I was afraid he'd distress you. And he has. He stirred up that childish nightmare. It wasn't. It was real. I saw her last night. She wasn't whole. She was half born, half dead. She told me I had to... Tell me, why did she come now? So suddenly, after so much time, <laughs> what do you suppose she was waiting for? She said, sometimes they need help. They need the strength of someone living. Who sang you this medieval tune? Mr. Orion? Only romantics and old children believe in ghosts. And murderers! Only those that get caught. Oh. <laughs> well, if it's Mr. Orion's strength that she needs, we'll have to find a way to deprive her of it. Hi, this is Mary from Pennsylvania. Love your show, love your movie. Right now I'm watching The Night Strangler and I just watched The Night Stalker previous. Thank you for showing both of those movies and keep up the good work. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Stay tuned.
The legend of the bleeding ghost. That's what they called her, the ghost. Legend of the bleeding ghost. Now, so during the break, you were telling me that when you went to Ireland, you went to where your family's from. Yes, we went to the small town of Ardra, which is the most... Say it again. Ardra. Ardra. How do you spell that? A-R-D-A-R-A. Oh, wow. So it looks like Ardera, but right, it's, right. Ard, it's pronounced Ardra. Well, you've right. got to say it right, though. Yeah. Have, <laughs> That's what I've been waiting for. Well, it's from Ardera. Ardra. Ardra. Yeah. He's yeah. good. You should have left him. I know. He fit right into our... Yeah, we be we became Irish locals man. at the local pub. Yeah. No, no, just no. You cannot do the leprechaun jokes. Over no, there. you can't do the leprechaun. They don't like that. Fairies. They they don't or talk know. about the fairies. They no, they're they're no I came here. They said, "Oh, you've been in Ireland." I said, "Yeah, at once." And they go, "Oh, do you have any lucky charms?" I'm here. In God's name, are you talking about lucky <laughs> charms? What's, what's a lucky? And then finally, it was explained to me. It's like a breakfast cereal. Yes. Here. So yes. Did he make lucky charm jokes? No. Good. My lucky charms are under here. Yes. Oh, hey. He's wearing a kilt in case you did not yes. notice. Kilt. It's very nice. Kilt. It's very nice. A black yes. kilt. So we Keeping did. We culture. spent a lot of time in the corner house, which was a very haunted pub. It's very old. Probably goes it's back. It's a haunted pub. Yes. It's probably about from the 1700s or so. This is where one goes to drink spirits, of course. Yes, of course. Mm -hmm. Lots and lots of spirits. Right. They also have their music nights, they which do. is fantastic. They have a lot of live Sins. music, a lot of Irish fiddles. And How fun. You know, I want to go back now. It's oh. a lot of fun. It's a wonderful place. No, you, you should, should do, go with us. Right. No, I was going to say, you should do like haunted island tours. We thought about doing that, actually. We were working on that you idea. Do it. Great minds. Yes. Right now. Cool. You've been doing, so typically these two do the Napa Ghost Tour, which is Napa as a town full of wine and drunk tourists. Spirits. And spirits. Right. Close to here. And it's like, you know, all right, so you've done the thing. You've, you've mastered that territory. Now it's time to go international. I definitely Inter think that's a, right. a brilliant idea. You should move there. Yes. We thought I about mean, that I mean, that would be well. sad that I cannot call you at the last minute to come <laughs> be a guest. But no, you should be there. And then when I visit, then you'll be all prepared. I don't know. It's a, it's a brilliant idea. I think we should do it. Um, you were talking about the Oublier. Yeah. Yes, the Lep Oublier. Lep Castle. And Lep Castle, the most Lep haunted. Castle. Lep yes. Castle. Lep Castle. The most haunted castle in Ireland. The most haunted castle in a. So is there some, like some rating type book? That one there is. It is. It to? appears in all the ghost books on Ireland. I mean, it's very, very, uh, very, very famous. Right. Uh, been on the shows. You know, everybody's done Lep Castle um, for TV show. But uh, it's I'm going to Google it. It's not on. Done. It's not on Yelp. It's on Creeped. Okay. <laughs> oh, is that a thing? Oh yeah, it's for like the haunted stuff. Really? Yes. Oh yeah, I'm it's totally real... making that up. But yeah. No, I was <laughs> going to say, if you are making it up, you should actually make it. Uh, yeah, see, I think it's right. I think it's yeah. a great idea. So what does Lep Castle get? Oh, it gets five ghosts. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, you know, I, I need something other than Google to use because every time I search, it's like suggesting shampoo and things like this. Yes. No, and senior things. <laughs> no, no, uh, like senior medicines that a senior would use. And get this. Burial insurance. Five years ago, I looked up, you know, a small tent to put a goat in. And every time I go on Google, I get ads for this bloody tent. Oh. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Why, why was he putting a goat in a tent? Why was he putting I a goat know. in a tent? Don't you know goats don't like the rain? <laughs> no, they are deathly afraid of rain. They hate the water. They can, they can handle anything. They handle sun by a thousand degrees. Give them a couple of sprinkles of rain and they hate it. I, I know the goat people out there will know. They will know. It's a true, true are story. Are they screaming goats? They will scream and run to shelter if it, it sounds rains. Sounds like a, we ran into the sheep in Ireland in the road. So that was the Irish traffic jam. That's, that's the way to do it. That's the best traffic jam you'll ever be in. Yeah. Right, what do you say all, we get back to the show? They were commuting together, though. Oh, yes. No, no. That's They can use a diamond lane if they do that. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. All right, I'm getting the signal. we got to get back to the film. But when we come back, I want to talk about this, this pilot program TV show thing oh. you're working on, right? Right? All right, off we go to the Ghost of Sierra de Cobre. We'll be right back after the break. See you soon.
Do you live in that? Yes. I've been staring at it. It's a house. I know. That lady lying there told me it was haunted. She hoped to scare me away. Is it haunted? Not on a regular basis. I like haunted houses. Have you ever wandered through one? Yes. Did you break in through the cellar window? I didn't have to. The doors were hanging open like... like eyelids that no one had bothered to put a penny on. <laughs> Would you like to spend an evening in a haunted house? Yes. Um, if your husband wouldn't mind. I'm not married. Well, I've been invited to a party at one Friday night. I'll pick you up at 8 o'clock. Right here. Right here? Mr. Orion! Is that you? Is it? Nelson Orion. Right here. You look too complacent this afternoon. Someone may have to kill me, or at least try. You're referring to one of them, I trust? Them? Your federal friend, the psychical, phenomena set. You know, I found it suspect when a lady feels compelled to disparage a thing she doesn't believe in. No, I was referring to Paulina, the Mandor's housekeeper. Why should she have to kill you? To keep me from giving strength to something half born, half dead. Sometimes the sun sets so suddenly. Mr. Orion, isn't there something I can do to help? You think you could suspend your disbelief in the supernatural? Just for the sake of argument? Let's start with the sobbing telephone. The sobbing telephone? It was a trick. <laughs> I knew it had to be. No self-respecting ghost would be caught dead using one of the devil's own inventions. Mrs. Mandor was making the calls. The housekeeper. Private line had a third extension hidden in the library. But it was Vivian Mandor who ordered the installation. I checked with the telephone company. Did you have a little vial of black magic analyzed? I've seen it work. Instant serenity. Probably the raw essence of some tranquilizing root juice. Well, I'm disappointed. I'd hoped it was one of those hallucinogenic, mind-expanding drugs. Why, Mrs. Finch, what an unholy little hope. 
Well, it would have explained the hallucination she suffered in the burial chamber. That wasn't a hallucination. Only Vivian Mandor saw it. And the pounding in the window seat? All of us heard that, not only Vivian Mandor. Well, it could have been a mechanical device hidden that someone could have operated from another part of the house. Only Vivian Mandor. She's the one person who's always been present, the one recipient of every psychical disturbance that's occurred since the genuine Harney began. The wind, the apparition, the pounding. Henry Mandor isn't being haunted. I never did believe any red-blooded American mother ghost would haunt her own son. I'm convinced that Louise Mandor isn't haunting anyone. Now, she'd had a natural death. Five doctors certified to that fact. She died smiling. Louise Mandel has no reason to be haunting Vivia. She'd have to have a desperate reason. Ghosts don't haunt out of whimsy, Mrs. Finch. They're either too noble or too evil to indulge in mere mischief. I say there's no ghost at all, except in that girl's very guilty conscience. There is a ghost. But whose? If the Mandor's housekeeper feels she has to kill you, it's because she's afraid of you, Mr. O'Brien. Not something half-born, half-dead. Human beings don't murder out of whimsy. I think you'd better find out what it is she doesn't want you to find out. Mr. Orion, I know how you feel about helping people who are haunted. And I admire you for that. If you were just looking for more of an adventure, I'd say, oh, go ahead and get yourself hurt. But you aren't. And there aren't too many of us in this world that care about the suffering of strangers. Still. Still, I can't help feeling that there are some things that no one should I'll be careful, Mrs. Finch. Hello, this is Mr. Livingston. It would appear I have been tasked with requesting you to help our show financially by visiting our patron page. Your generosity will help us keep Creature Features on the air. With only a few dollars a month from you, your kindness will allow us to continue creating new entertainment for your viewing pleasure each and every week. And if you have the desire to give more, you might even receive a gift from Tangella. I think not. Please visit the website below to learn more. Thank you.
Tangella, do you have Mr. Van Dahl's avocado toast? Thank you. Mr. Mandor asks if you will see him at this hour, simply to say goodbye. Mrs. Mandor will bring him. Mr. Orion? Are we all right, Mrs. Finch? Well, I'll just leave my door a little bit open. Mr. Orion, I regret this intrusion in the dead of night. It's quite all right. Sit, Vivio. I couldn't leave without saying goodbye and thanking you. You don't owe me anything, Mr. Mandor. You're wrong, Mr. Orion. I owe you a great deal. I needed a justifiable reason to rid myself of that estate. You gave me that reason when you proved my mother is haunting me. Now, Mrs. Mandor, tell him now, or you'll never tell him. And you'll be haunted for the rest of your life. Tell me what? The ghost hasn't been haunting you, Henry. You? Yes. Why should my mother haunt you? It isn't your mother. It's the woman who was murdered in the mission of Sierra de Cobre, the American school teacher. I was born in Sierra de Cobre. My father was an American dreamer who came there to dream. So it was up to my mother to earn money for bread or beg for it. We earned it by guiding tourists to the mission to see the bleeding ghost. I would lead the tourists down into the catacombs and my mother would be hiding there. She'd moan and splash some sugared water colored with soot. Then, 
My mother discovered an hallucinogenic drug called ayahuasca or yage. A few drops of it, and the tourists saw all the horror or beauty they wanted to see. But for some reason, it didn't have enough effect on the school teacher, and she refused to pay us. So my mother gave her more and more, and an overdose makes you go mad before it kills you. When she went mad, we became frightened. So my mother locked her in one of the little tombs, and we ran away. You were a child, Vivia. Why should she want to haunt you? Mr. Orion, did you help my wife? Mrs. Mando, last night in the burial chamber, the school teacher told you to expose your mother to the Sierra de Cobre authorities. But I can't. This is Livingston, and you're watching Creature Features. Not now. Uh, stay tuned. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. You know, I like this film because it's got ghosts in it. it it's, it's making a turn. Unlike your footage. <laughs> <laughs> no, they show me so much footage and it's like, I'm thinking, hey, look, you see that shadow right there? It's like, what? That's just a bloody shadow from a cameraman. Look or at the like smeary that. face with the smeary yeah. face yeah. next no, to it. No, they look actually the have some good stuff. We're going to show some in a second, but you're doing a pilot. Yes, we are. For a thing. We are. We, we filmed a pilot at the Haunted Ride Hotel out in the Sacramento Delta. I don't know where this is. It's, uh, it's in Walnut Grove. Right. It used to be in the town of Ride, which was burned down in the 20s. The entire town was burned down. Yes. The entire town burned down twice. Twice. Uh-huh. So, but the Ride, the Ride Hotel was rebuilt. Right. was rebuilt as a brothel 
and a speakeasy. In 1927. That's a nice combination. Oh, right. what could go wrong there? Um, right. Plus, one of our favorite things is that it has connections to old Hollywood. Yes. Oh. From the silent film era all the way up into the And actually, of the it was owned by Lon Chaney Jr.'s brother. You know, he's done so much work in, in the horror. So, yes, he has. Yes. Janey and yeah. Lon Chaney Jr. Uh-huh. Right. And the entire Chaney family must be like heirs to horror. But enough about that. Let's talk about the actual show. So what's the premise of this pilot? Well, the premise is, is that we've been working this location for about 10 years now. Right. And, I mean, it has literally everything that makes a great... A haunted location. It has uh, a lot of, you know, mysterious deaths. It has a lot of, uh, you know, gang activity. It has the speakeasy that had an old tunnel connected to an old still. And then you had the brothel workers, and some of them were treated so nicely. Right. Okay. Murder. Um, yeah. We have murder there as well. You'd have to have murder in a place like that. Yes. Oh, absolutely. Right. And we... Up on the uh, second floor, we tracked one girl, and she showed us how she died, and it was absolutely horrible. She showed you how she died? Absolutely. She took us through the moments. So she when you say she showed moments. you, was she like a tour guide? <laughs> sort right. of. She, well, Devin you have to explain this to me. I, I don't know. You've got yes. it. Well, so, so go Devin ahead. Devin was using the dowsing rods to right. follow her energy right. up and down the hallways which took them through two rooms and it, it roughly stopped at a window. So she actually jumped out of the window to escape the killer. Now there's many details you have there that do not come from two pieces of metal. How do you establish this? That would be with mediumship. Oh, you do that? Yes, and that part was So you're getting the psychic signal. Yes. And he's getting the actual topography. The energy, yeah, the, right, energy, right. the energy signature. All right. And the yeah. thing is, is like when we work with our group and when we work together, uh, it's it's a combination of putting input in with each other and trying to figure out exactly what happened. To it's like your super friends. Yes, we really <laughs> no, are. You each have we your really own superpower. Are. We do. I, I hate to say it, but yeah, you're right. right. We're you're better. Right. We're better together. That's right. Yeah. No, no, no. You're 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 greater than the well, sum of your parts. And the right? thing is, right. is that. Uh, you know, she pushes me, I push her, and we... There's pushing involved. There's a lot of... <laughs> Damn it. Get out of There's here. No, no quibbling allowed here. All right, well, uh, we're going to want to take a look at this pilot. So. Oh, yeah, it, it's going to be a... We're, we were so excited. We just finished filming it just before we went to Ireland, and it's... Fantastic work. All right, we're going to look uh, look at a tiny clip on the way out of this segment, yep. and then we're going to get back to the movie, but here's a tiny clip from what's it called? Paranormal Crossroads. Paranormal Crossroads. We will see you after the credits. Don't go away after the credits, because we'll be here and wondering where you are. If you're not here, well, I'm, I'm going to be bummed. <laughs> see you soon. The Ride Hotel is a magnificent gem on the delta that's incredibly haunted you walk in here and it's just like stepping back into the 20s everything it's like walking through a time warp so i do think that something was taking me over you don't come into this thinking that oh these spirits can harm you physically but after doing it for a while you know that they can i said i would never come back here again but now i'm here i have been pushed, I have been shoved, I have been poked, I've been scratched. It's not a matter of, oh, it's time to go. It's, oh, let's figure this out. I want answers. That's why I'm here. We don't run from the things that go bump in the dark. We run to them. That's sobbing, Mr. Mandor. I was the one who told Arlene about the telephone. Vivia, you didn't know 
she was going down there and making those calls. I knew. And you let her? That day when I got back from that business trip and found her in the house. She told me she'd paid the servants $5,000 to disappear, that it was worth it to be alone with me and you. That's why she pretended to be a housekeeper. She didn't want anyone in the house but the three of us. She'd been a long time in searching for me. She wanted to enjoy my good fortune in marrying so well. She'd read all about it in the newspapers. Why didn't you tell me at once? She said if I did, she'd kill you. You shouldn't have believed her. You should have... Mr. Mandor, haven't you ever been afraid of somebody? She started giving me the drug. The sweet medicine she used to give me when I was a little girl. I stood by while she made all those telephone calls. They were supposed to frighten you into selling the Mandor estate. I thought... Fear was better than death. It isn't. It's only slower. Go back to your home, Henry. No. Mr. Orion can turn us over to the police. No. Please. There's nothing you can do at the moment. Please. Is there someone here who can take me there? I will. The car keys, Mr. Orion. try to kill you. I tried to tell her that the school teacher had come for us, but she only took me into the library and gave me drugs that calmed me. I suppose American school teachers have better things to do than light the stars. Will you let me help you? You'll tell the police it was an accident. She begged to be taken to the mission. She would pay anything, she said, to see the bleeding ghost. School teacher, parched in the heart. Was it wrong to put a few drops of cooked illusion on her tongue? We didn't want to kill her. Tell her that. She will believe you. Ask them to show a little mercy. Just a little. Just for my daughter. The golden one. And I'll ask. I'll beg them. Have you ever witnessed anything so excessive? She's never begged for anything. When I was a child, she'd grab me by the throat and scream, lie, deceive, beguile, but never beg. My father finally took me out of that black boil called Sierra de Cobre. I was asleep on his lap when we crossed the border. And I woke up in his country. You went back to her when you grew up. No. She wanted me, so she came and took me. 
Whenever she wanted anything, she simply took it. Well, you've uncovered worse than a prank, Mr. Orion. Turn us over to the police and let justice collect whatever payments are due. What are you going to do with me? Will you let me help you? To escape? To escape what? The police? The police. It isn't the police I'm worried about. <laughs> no. You do not come from Sierra de Cobre. You do not know what they do to you for stealing a cup of milk to feed a starving child. They'll show you more mercy than she will. She? The ghost of the woman you murdered. Ghosts? I've never seen a ghost. I have seen the police. What do you think happened outside in the car? The brake slipped. And the locked doors? <sighs> Let me go. That school teacher wants a murder revenged. And she won't stop haunting you until you've confessed to it and paid for it. Let me take you to the police. No. Find some other way. There is no other way. All right. I can't do anything more than beg. And I can't do anything worse. I'll bring your car to the door. The deer leaps highest. You can take me to the police now, Mr. Orion.
Would you please carry my mother's body to the car, Mr. Orion? Mr. Orion. Mr. Mandor asked me to go up to the sitting room with him, and the moment we got there, he ripped the telephone out. He asked me to tell you that I saw him do that. Was there a mechanical device in the window seat? Did she, did she deliberately drive off? No. I think for a moment she contemplated trying to escape, but only out of habit. I think she was ready to face at least a little reality. Oh, it must have been an accident. I refuse to believe in all ghosts, especially those of American school teachers. No, not the school teacher this time. Her mother was in the car with her. Paulina. Even more possessive in death than she was in life. Whenever she wanted anything, she simply took it.
It's the dot of dawn. The city council expects you at 8.30, and don't tell me you're still too busy with prank phone calls. No, Ben. The prank is over. That's all it was, huh? Just a prank. Well, apparently there was a wee bit more to it than that, Mr. Sloan. But it needn't worry people who don't believe in such things. Come into the house. I'll buy you breakfast. And so ends the ghost of Sierra de Cobre. Did you know it was going to end that way? She, you know, she watched it last time. Last time I was interrupted, I did not see the end. I did not know how this movie ended. She no? did. Yeah, no. She loves ghost films. She loves ghosts. She loves films, but she loves ghosts. And this more. wasn't a Scooby-Doo moment, and it wasn't. No, I was going to say, you know, this is one of the few times where there's an actual ghost, and it's none of that, what does he say? I want to get away with it if it wasn't for your meddling kids. But see, <laughs> now, I don't like it when they end a ghost film this way because it's it's silly, right? No. She's silly. Well, they kind We're of Thelma and Louise, the end there. Yeah. No, that was, no, I don't know why they had to kill off that because she did not do anything wrong, right? No, well, her high cheekbones are gone forever. I know. <laughs> high, you know, her cheekbones could have, like, grabbed the side of the cliff and... <laughs> I did. And it was anyway, a nice car. It was. Very nice. <laughs> These things happen in 1964. Anyways, uh, nice film. We'll show it again in three years or more. Something like that. Unless we can get the actual ghost with, uh, what's his head? What's the movie Ghost? Patrick Swayze? Patrick Swayze. Yes. Yeah, you know, he's a ghost now. He is he a ghost. Right? Well, we keep trying on the Ouija board. He hasn't... He hasn't picked up yet. Yeah. I bet he changed his number when he knew you he, you're trying to reach him. Maybe Anyways, we should what, do the clay thing. The clay thing. Right. Yes. Why didn't we think of that? Yeah. That's that's clever. That's clever. So what's next for Napa Ghost Hunters? Well, we're reopening our Vacaville tour. What is this? This will be May 13th. And no, no, that is when, but what is this? Oh, uh, what is it? I'm sorry. Um, it is a tour that's led by both ourselves and the Vacaville Historical uh, society. Nice. And they will be doing the uh, in-depth history and we'll be doing the ghost hunting on the tours. Now, if I know my Latin, Vacaville means city of cows, does yes. it not? It does. Cowtown. It so does. Do you run into cow ghosts? No, but we do run into Native American ghosts. Oh, that's spooky. And uh, old uh, flu victims, so they had a flu hospital oh, there right, from 1919, right. 1918. They did? Yes. What do they call that? Like uh, an infirmary. An infirmary. Yes. Right. My favorite part of that, that tour is that with us touring or uh, pairing up with the Historical Society, they have access and they can look up everything that we of find. Of course, right. Okay. We, we, yes, definitely. We will be working in the jail as well. So we will be going inside the building, working in the jail. Not as inmates, I hope. No. Not this time. Not this no. time. Right, right. No, well, that's, that sounds wonderful. And this is something that uh, anybody could sign up for by going where? To NapaGhost.com. NapaGhost.com, and you can learn more about that. And you mentioned something about a Halloween event coming up. Yes, Devin. Yeah, so uh, we're doing the Ride Hotel. Uh, we're going to be doing a Halloween event over there. It's going to be an overnight investigation uh, where you could, like, say you've never been on an investigation. You could come join us. And we'll show you the ropes of how to ghost hunt, and we'll do this amazing location and give you the ins and outs. And maybe we'll on show Halloween. the pilot. On Halloween. On Halloween. On Halloween. We'll have a market as well, which is like a dark market. I've seen you do this before. Incredible. I mean, it's like the creepy doll factory. Yes, right? yes. Absolutely. Yes. She loves the creepy stuff. 
Yeah. All right. No, that's wonderful. Well, you guys are always busy, and it's always wonderful to have you here. Well, thank you. It's and next pleasure. time you're in the area, make sure you come see us, right? Well, thank you. Yes, we will. All thank right. You. As far as you guys go, thank you so much for staying up late and watching our silly program with the wonderful guests. Because if, if you were not watching this, you would be watching The Love Boat, and uh, we know what happens when people watch The Love Boat late at night. So, anyways, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your weekend, and we will see you next week. And don't forget, we love you. See you next time. So, ghost hunters, you know, I'm thinking next time you go to the UK, you should go to my hometown of Luton to do a ghost investigation. No one goes to Luton. <laughs>